Good morning, all. I guess we better have a brunch every single week. We know where the priorities are, don't we? Not good for you. So we welcome you on this fifth Sunday in Lent. We welcome you to the house of the Lord to worship our awesome Savior. You should have received a small individual bag this morning of cracker and grape. For this is the first Sunday of a new month, and our tradition is to have communion uh, on that day. And so hopefully you received that this morning. Got a few announcements that we want to look at. There is a potluck after uh, church today, as you already know. Jackie Cooper, we thank you for organizing that. Uh, there's plenty for everyone, and so please don't hesitate uh, to stay. If you would be willing to take home an Easter yard sign, they are out by the front door. There's just a couple more weeks now before Easter, and we'd like to make sure that the community knows that they are invited to join us on Easter morning. And so please take a yard sign in one of the, the metal holders uh, that it goes in. This Tuesday, April 5th, we have both an outreach team meeting at 3 p.m. You're welcome uh, to come to that meeting as the outreach team talks about uh, upcoming projects <laughs> that we will be doing to reach out into the community. And then the vision team will be meeting at 6 p.m. on <coughs> Tuesday evening with Reverend Rod Cartwainian from DeWitt Redeemer Church. If you have printed Christian reading materials to donate to Christian Resources International, those need to be, uh, well, they really need to be the St. Louis Church at this point, but um, they need to be in my office by Wednesday, uh, or they'll have to wait for the next trip, and we go about once a year. If you signed up to make uh, two dozen cookies for Easter plates that are be going out into the community with an Easter invitation to join us for our worship, uh, those uh, are going to be due on Tuesday, April, 20, April 12th, and they'll be delivered uh, into your community that day or on Wednesday. And then uh, just know that while Lacey Shelley is off, several weeks uh, for a surgery that she's having this week. We want to thank and welcome Nancy G, who is going to be serving in your office on Thursday morning. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Nancy G, for saying yes when somebody asked you if you would be willing to do that. This is the fifth week and actually the sixth service of our current sermon series, Good Enough. Embracing the imperfections of life and faith. And so we find ourselves this week at looking at how fragile we are. We look at our brokenness. In weeks past, we've looked at perfectionism. We've looked at control. We've looked at how we need nourishment and we uh, extend nourishment to others. We've looked at giving each other grace when mistakes are made. So today we are fragile. We look at our humanness, our fragileness in the midst of daily life, and we're glad you're here. I mentioned already that um, we'll be serving communion uh, today, that we the way that we have been during uh, the pandemic, but it hasn't changed our our beliefs and our policies all in the United Methodist Church all are welcome. You don't need to be a member of this church nor another church. Jesus Christ our Lord is our host as well as our Savior and it's Jesus who's inviting you to his table to be a part of his table and his nourishment for our lives. And so you don't need to be a member here nor anywhere else. We just pray that you are desiring a close relationship, a closer relationship with your Savior. And so you are welcome at this table. I'm going to move to our three.
threshold moment. The story of Jesus includes many moments around tables, as this was part of his ritual of relationship, even to the last. In this fifth week of the Lent season, we'll hear a story of love and devotion from the disciple Mary directed at Jesus at the table. As we will see, Jesus tries to prepare his beloved companions for his upcoming death. Talk of death is like a gut punch to many of us. We would rather believe that we and our loved ones are invincible, that we're able to will ourselves into being strong. We all know that isn't always how the story goes. Amen? We are fragile. Let's admit it. Our lives, like the plants and the gardens we tend, are susceptible to elemental dangers and a life cycle of letting go in order to live. So let's acknowledge our fragileness of this day. Join me in the uh, threshold response that you find in your bulletin or up on the screen. What in our lives do we dream about for tomorrow? Void of sorrow. Time spent regretting decisions of our yesterdays. Mistakes we made. Sometimes we get what we get. Life disappoints us. And yet, God is still here. And somehow, this faith is good enough. God is still here. And somehow, this faith is good enough. But that last was Ginger to lead us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is based on Psalm 32. <laughs> and I'd like you to join with me in the saying this. Holy One, lover of our souls, we call out to you. You know our tears and sorrows, and you bear the seeds of grief with us. Open us this day to your comfort that nurtures these seeds in sheets of joy, the simple and good enough moments that fill our days. Amen. It's time for our kids to come forward, so if they would like to come and join Ginger and myself this morning, they can come right up here. And, Cole, would you hold that for me for a minute? Who else would like to help? I need somebody to hold that. Doesn't matter, there's lots of stuff today. Easton had his hand there. There we go. And hold on a minute. <laughs> I already need one. No, no. <laughs> All right, we're going to need those in just a few minutes. Whoops, I got the wrong thing. Hold on. Hold on. Oops, so, 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 so. That didn't work. I grabbed the wrong papers, Miss Ginger. And I need those. All right, now I've got the right ones. Oh, well, that's right. I'm not supposed to be sitting down there today, am I? So very glad you are here. I really need your help, and you are just in time. It seems our friend here is needing some help. She <laughs> seems to be. I will take. Oh dear, what can we do to help? You seem very fragile. Are you hungry? Oh yes. Quick, does anyone have a snack? <laughs> Is, is 
that why you are so down? What can we do? Oh, I see you have a Kleenex. Oh my, we may need something else to make her feel better. Anyone have a hug?
questions. I kind of serve as a time of confession for us. And then we've been taking a few moments of silent prayer. And so here's our questions for today. Jesus speaks the words no one wanted to hear. He was not always going to be around. Oh, don't say that, we sometimes say. So many of us have said that phrase, oh, don't say that you're not going to be around forever to our loved ones. But the truth is, our lives are fragile. Perhaps we get uncomfortable because it reveals the precious nature of the precious, the present moment, laying bare the beauty and the horror of it all. The indescribable pain we know will one day face invades our senses. We don't like to think about ourselves or ones that we love passing from this earth. Those thoughts can sometimes be just like a pervasive perfume that we'll hear about in today's scripture. Inescapable. What if we stopped denying the limited nature of our lives and breathed in deeply the fragrance of vulnerability and fragileness? Let's take a few moments of silent reflection, lifting our thoughts and concerns to our awesome God that already knows our needs and our concerns. Let's do that by taking three of those Jesus breath prayers, breathing Jesus in deeply as we can, holding it for a second, and then as we exhale, trying to let go of the things burdening us. Let's do that. Jesus in. Let go. Once again. <coughs> One last time. Let it go. Here this compassionate word form. Paul's letter to the Philippians. He writes, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Paul's writing to the early church. Still necessary for us this day. Know that already God is offering us freedom from the need to avoid suffering at the cost of denying the fullness of life. We are invited into the knowledge that Christ's vulnerability, his fragileness, his humanness in life, death, and resurrection shows us the sacred nature of the heights and depths of sorrow and joy in our own journey. And know that despite our sometimes faltering steps, in the name of Jesus our Christ, you are forgiven, even now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven, even now. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Now, for many weeks now, we've used the phrase, I am good enough through Christ as our passing of the peace using American Sign Language. 
So this is the sixth service that we've used that phrase. I don't think we have to maybe go through all the teaching for that. I am good enough through Christ. We pray that whether you are worshiping here in person today, or whether you are watching online today or sometime during the week, that you can accept that you are already good enough. Not because of anything that you have done or said, but all because of what Christ has done for us. Let it be so.
took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard. She anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? Judas said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave Mary alone. She brought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. A word of God that is still speaking. Amen. Today we find ourselves in a village called Bethany. Not unlike Breckenridge. Not Bethlehem, where Jesus was born, but Bethany, about six miles outside of Jerusalem. Jesus is on his third and final journey to the Holy City. We find him at the home of close friends, Lazarus, who he has recently raised from the dead, and Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha. Scripture tells us that Martha is serving the dinner. She's a server, a servant's heart. Lazarus and Jesus are reclining for this dinner. That is the custom of Jesus' day. We didn't, they didn't sit at tables and chairs. They reclined on the floor, kind of laid sideways. Scripture tells us that the other sister, Mary, anoints Jesus' feet with this very costly perfume and then wipes his feet with her hair. This nard is imported from the mountains of India. Think of the cost. She uses about a pint of pure nard. And we're told that it costs a year's wage. Just think about that. Even in terms of today, would you spend your annual wage on perfume? What if it was for Jesus? And then we're told that Judas Iscariot objected to wasting the money that had been spent on this perfume. <clears throat> we know that there is a story of a woman anointing Jesus in all four of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Anytime a story is repeated in every single one of the four Gospels, it is meant for us to pay attention. Of course, we should pay attention to all the stories and all the Gospels. But when it comes about four times, 
it should have great significance for us. The anointings in the four Gospels are trying to teach us about Jesus' upcoming death. The word wipe that is used here is the same word used to describe Jesus is wiping the feet of his disciples in the upper room. What we call the foot washing. It's the same word here used. So we find that Judas doesn't appreciate Mary's expensive, costly gift. He says, why wasn't that money used for the poor? Judas was the keeper of the money bag for the disciples and Jesus. This very same Judas will be the one who will betray Jesus in just a few days with a kiss. He doesn't really care about the poor. He doesn't care about keeping the money for their needs. He wants the money to be available for his own needs. He's a thief. Jesus knew what Judas had been and was doing, dipping into the funds, although Jesus didn't correct him. When we sin, and we all do, God may not immediately do anything to stop us, but that doesn't mean that God is approving of our actions. It doesn't mean he doesn't know. We will get what we deserve. It will come. Jesus knew Judas' heart. God always looks at the intent of our heart. Judas's life was a lie. Satan was gaining more and more control over Judas each and every day. Jesus knows us. God knows us. That should make us want to keep our actions consistent with our words. The good news is we have nothing to fear with Jesus. So we should have nothing to hide. The sense of the fragility of life is never more present than when death is called to mind. For all of us, having experienced this pandemic, in which now every one of us knows someone whose life was cut short by a virus, I think most of us have found ourselves saying something like, I've been really thinking about what's really important to me. I've been thinking about how I spend my time, what I want to spend my precious, my limited, my fragile time and energy on. I'm going to think about how I spend my dollars and what a difference they could make. So maybe a 
is why we have a moment to think about, to acknowledge our own humanness, our own fragility, our own brokenness. Maybe it's a time for us to consider extending mercy, for we all fall, fall short of God's plans for us. Maybe it's a time where we should be spending more and more time going deep with Jesus instead of going wide with overextending ourselves. Overextending ourselves until we forget to savor life itself. This scene where Jesus reminds his disciples of the precious time that we have with one another takes place in the house of Lazarus. He's a very, very good friend who has returned to life must still feel dramatically fresh in all of their lives and in this household. Death is still in the air as Jesus reminds them that he too will die. The difference is, as he shares with them, it's shared in the context of the promise of a new life, of eternal life through Jesus' resurrection. So can, can we dare vulnerability in our church family, sharing what really matters with one another in the very house of the Lord where resurrection new life eternal life is what we proclaim
Lord, you are patient. You are here to meet us, to reside with us in a strange and alienating times. You are always faithful. You are always present in this body and in this body. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy.
we will remember the great gift that you have provided for each and every one of us. And all we have to do to receive that eternal life is to say thank you and invite you into our hearts as our Lord and as our King. Let it be so. Amen. It is time for us to raise our prayers for each other. for prayers for the Agel family. I'm not sure I'm saying it right, but Agel family with the passing of their mother, Phyllis. Jackie is asking for prayers for Lacey. We'll be having that surgery on Thursday down at Henry Ford Hospital. And then many weeks of recuperation know that you will be in our prayers and that you will be missed but there's nothing more powerful than our prayers to help you on your journey she's also asking for continued prayers for her father Marvin Shepler who has cancer such an amazing God. It's amazing for us to realize that you created each and every cell of each and one, every one of our bodies. And that you are recreating us right now. So those that we are praying for that need that healing touch and there are many others. We realize that you are recreating them just as you are recreating us. And for those that are grieving, lost loved ones, we believe that you have taken them home to be with you. So we ask for peace and comfort for families that are grieving their losses. We continue to ask you for patience. Patience in this journey. issues seems to go on and on. But we know that you know the end and will provide. So give us patience and faith to know that you are at work. We ask for your peace for our world. A peace that seems far from us. But a peace that you know someday. And in the meantime, help us to remember to pray for that peace, to pray for healing, to pray for the needs of those all around us and even the needs of the stranger. And if there is some way that we can be a part of that healing, part of that answer, help us to do just that. Always and everywhere. In your name. Join me in the Lord's Prayer if you would. We're using the traditional text of using trespass and trespasses. It should have been at the end of communion today and I skipped over it. So let's say the Lord's Prayer now together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
offering called Proof and Practice. And it's from John 14, 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Jesus does not judge our love for him by our professions or our promises. He judges us by our practices. If we love him, we will do what he has commanded us to do. His greatest commandment is found in John 14, 34 and 35, in which he commands us to love others as unselfishly as he loves us. Such love is epitomized by the giving spirit and the life of sacrifice. As the offering plate is passed, validate your profession of faith while you live your practice.
Blessed are you, dear, dear ones. During this holy work of suffering, what must be suffered? I'm grieving what has been lost. Of knowing the unthinkable truth. The truth that must be known. The grief that can make you feel on the other side of a glass from the world around you. A force field of different realities separating you. Yet blessed are you and yours, for yours is the one most seen by God who breathes compassion upon you, even now, who has walked this path, who leans towards you, gathering you up in the arms of his love. Rest now. Dear ones, you are not alone. We are not alone. Rejoice and be glad. God loves you. Let it be so. And now may the God who loves all of creation especially the grief-stricken parts and Jesus, our companion along this crooked path of life and the Holy Spirit who loves to improvise praise God in surprising ways go with us well with us. And I guess this morning above all, give us joy. Amen. God's peace. God's show.